The discovery of fire has done amazing things for humanity. It provides comfort in the form of warmth and light, and the ability to cook foods was a pivotal step in human evolution. But it also has its dangers. We're feeding this fire conversation one experiment at a time. Plenty of household liquids are flammable. At the top of the list is everyday rubbing alcohol, but when it ignites, its combustive power shines through. This is a whoosh bottle, and you'll see why in a second. So uh, we have some 70% uh, isopropanol. This is just rubbing alcohol like you buy at the drugstore. What we're gonna do is pour some of this alcohol into our bottle here, and we're gonna coat the inside of the bottle. It's gonna start gassing off, and all those fumes are gonna fill the bottle. I'm just gonna three, two, one, and then we'll hopefully see the whoosh bottle do what it does. One, two, three. There you go, the whoosh bottle. <laughs> Coating the inside of the bottle allows the isopropyl alcohol to evaporate from a large surface, creating a flammable vapor inside the bottle. Fire shoots out of the top of the bottle because flames are pushed by expanding gas. And while the lip of the bottle can melt, it doesn't hear because the reaction is so fast. The fire goes out before it gets hot enough to start melting the plastic. Let's see how changing up the concentration of each alcohol affects the heat of the flames and how fast they will burn. Can I have three of y'all come forward? We'll have a little bit of a competition. All right, cool. So everybody kind of stand behind the bottle. So we have three different concentrations of alcohol. These first two are isopropanol, 70%, and then 90%. Now down there, we have 100% ethanol. There's almost no water in ethanol. So that okay. should produce a different reaction. I think I'm set up to lose, because I think mine's going to burn a little bit slower. Thank you. Why do you think it's going to burn slower? Uh, I think because it has a little bit more water than theirs do. Here we come in the middle. Everybody ready? Three, two, one, go. The one on the end burned really, really quickly. The pure ethanol burns the fastest and the hottest, while the 90% burns the longest, the 70% burns the brightest. Unfortunately, I started a little bit quicker than the other one, so hopefully nobody thinks I cheated. This FLIR camera shot is actually really cool. You can see a really fast, dramatic spike of fire, and it actually creates kind of a rainbow effect for the different layers of heat. In this case, the white and red colors indicate hot temperatures, up to around 320 degrees. You can clearly see that the 100% ethanol is the hottest, but the flame also goes out the quickest. The two mixtures with water actually burn longer than the pure fuel. The varying concentrations of alcohol determine the speed and the intensity of the reaction. The 70% isopropanol burns the brightest. The yellow color is indicative of incomplete combustion and unburned carbon. These bits of carbon get hot and glow. The 90% alcohol solution burns the longest because there's more fuel to burn than the 70%. And the 100% pure ethanol burns the fastest. Ethanol only contains two carbon atoms per molecule. The lighter weight causes it to evaporate quickly and mix with the air, burning faster. We've seen how some household chemicals behave when ignited. Now, we're looking at a potentially more flammable fuel. We're not gonna be using alcohol as our fuel this time. We're gonna be using gasoline. Flammable or combustible liquids like gasoline do not burn. It's the mix of their vapors and oxygen in the air that burns. We're going to be actually pumping oxygen into it. We don't want to stand too close to it. If any kind of like static charge or any amount of friction were to occur, we could have a detonation. Our whoosh bottle is facing the ultimate test. This time, we're filling it with gasoline and oxygen. And I have a battery connected to it to send electricity to the gas to ignite it. Good luck, whoosh bottle. You guys ready? Ready. Oh, yeah. All right, clear. Three, two, one. We'll call that a swoop, <laughs> like a swoop bottle. 
Our whoosh bottle shows how a car's combustion engine works. Gasoline or ethanol comes into the engine and mixes with oxygen. A spark from the spark plug lights the mixture, causing an explosion. This forces the piston out like a cork in a bottle. The pistons help turn the crankshaft, which turns the wheels, which in turn makes the car go. The explosion in our bottle is like a one-cylinder car engine. I saw the blast, and the next thing I knew, this wave hit me right in my chest. Darren, are you satisfied? I am, and then we can actually answer some of your questions about where it blew up and why okay. with the high speed here. Let's awesome. check it out. So what's cool is you get this initial reaction that's similar to what we saw inside, and it just goes huge and has a re-explosion. Wow. After it hits. Wow. And yeah, look, it went the opposite side of the handle, exactly opposite of the handle is where Man. the explosion happened. I think the it's... major takeaway here is you don't do this at home. We had a bunch of professionals that made sure that we weren't going to kill ourselves here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can make it look cool with crazy cool cameras. Yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. that. We're exploring the surprising flammability of everyday household materials. But there's a potential fire in your kitchen that will surprise you even more. Coffee creamer. How could something as basic as coffee creamer be dangerous? Darren and I step outside the firehouse to find out why the coffee creamer could be a recipe for disaster. So, Kevin, that's awesome. Yeah. What kind of insanity you got going for us today? Insanity? This is all very reasonable. And this is what they call the red dragon. The red dragon. It's a torch that they use to burn off propane spills. I yeah. thought maybe we could come here and make our own version of the red dragon, but instead of gas, we're going to be using an edible substance. Let's go do that. All right. The fire department is used to managing flames safely, so this is a great place to experiment with a weird way of making fire. Corey Deerdorf, a fire official, is here along with our engineer, Nick. That red dragon torch is amazing. Pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Really cool. So we're going to do our own version of it. But we're not going to use gas. We're actually going to use non-dairy creamer. Really? Yeah. Why would we do that? Well, you'll find out. Okay. Non-dairy creamer seems like your run-of-the-mill food product. So how could it fuel a fire? So each one of you has a bucket with a hose attached, and there's a sparkler inside. So you have a lighter. So what I'm going to ask you to do is light the sparkler, and then when I give you the three, two, one countdown, just blow into the end of that tube. And what you want is you want to push as much air as you can in as short amount of time as possible. Yeah. All right. So are we racing here, or what are we? No, you don't have to race. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I want to see who I, gets the biggest flame. I'm All just right. saying. All right. I'm feeling pretty confident. I believe <laughs> I heard you used to be a trumpet player, so I feel like I'm I, a little outmatched. I was told I had a trumpet face. All right. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Exactly. <laughs> but it means there's a spit valve there Absolutely. somewhere. Which... <laughs> okay. OK, so safety goggles. Check. Gentlemen, pick up your lighters. Go ahead and light your sparklers. So we've got a bucket of powdered creamer with the burning candle and a sparkler inside to help light the particles. This might work. Grab your hose. So on the count of three, we'll see who wins. This is going to be fun. I'm excited. Three, two, one. Wow. That was Corey, awesome. You won. That was amazing. That was awesome. You definitely won. <laughs> So Corey and Nick blow into the creamer, causing it to atomize into the air. And as we can see on Darren's high-speed camera, the results are combustive. Coffee creamer will only ignite if dispersed into the air. Powdered coffee creamer also contains flammable fats that oxidize easily. A yellow flame like this can get as hot as 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we're essentially looking at here is a dust explosion. As the coffee creamer is shot up into the sky, the fire trails it. And it feeds off of all the oxygen in between the coffee creamer particles and creates that big mushroom cloud. It's actually surprising how much fire is produced from such a small amount of material. What do you think? 
That was incredible. Yeah. You know, it was something I really didn't expect, especially out of something that you just put in your coffee. Yeah, those little particles of non-dairy creamer have a high fat content, so they burn really, really easily, but they need oxygen. So when you blew through the tube, you were dispersing a lot of oxygen and separating the particles, and that oxygen allowed them to burn really, really easily, and so we got a big cloud of fire. You know, at the fire department, you always hear about the smaller the particles, the faster they burn, and the hotter they burn. But to see something that you put in your everyday coffee and the reaction that it caused, it was really cool. A long time ago, there used to be a lot of common fires in bread factories and grain silos and things like that. And it's because of this kind of uh, particle. Guys, it's incredible. Have you ever had any experiences with like dust fires or like lint in the air causing fires? Oh, absolutely. The smaller the particles, like you guys said, the, the faster that it burns and the hotter that it burns. Yeah. Playing with fire is fun, but it's time to cool off. 우주에서 가장 재미있는 채널, 디스커버리.